Guys, there's so much going on in the blockchain space right now that I'm being perfectly honest with you. Like, I have a hard time with keeping up with everything because this space is absolutely exploding. I just released a video a couple weeks ago talking about some of the top trends to watch out for in blockchain right now. You know, there's lots of things on the horizon like gaming, metaverse, NFTs, social tokens. But in this video, I actually want to talk about another trend to add to this list that's likely to emerge in this space a whole lot sooner than you might think. I want to talk about that as a blockchain developer who works this technology on a daily basis and what you need to understand about this. So before we get into that, you know, if you're new around here, Hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to become a blockchain master step-by-step -step, start to finish, then head on over to dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. All right, so before we talk about this trend, let me kind of set this up and tell you why I'm talking about this in the first place. So I just got done watching this uh, talk from Vitalik Buterin at ECC. This is a big Ethereum conference that just wrapped up. And in case you're brand new right here and don't know who Vitalik is, well, he's the mastermind behind Ethereum itself. And so whenever he talks at events like this, people pay a lot of attention and are highly influenced by the things that he says here. And inside this talk, he actually lays out some of the next things that can be built on top of Ethereum because of some of the major technological breakthroughs that are happening right now. And so I want to give a quick recap of some of the things that he says. I'll put a link to this talk down in the comment section below so you can actually watch the entire thing. But I'll give you a really brief summary and then really hone in on this trend here. So the whole point of his talk is talking about what we have in blockchain right now is most mostly decentralized finance or DeFi, at least built on top of Ethereum. We have cryptocurrencies and then we have things that you can do on top of that with cryptocurrencies like trade them with decentralized exchanges, use them inside of other DeFi apps for like yield farming, you know, earn high APYs that you can't get inside your bank account. And he says all these things are great, but we want to look beyond that to find the next things that we can do with Ethereum itself. And so he lays out several different ideas for what we can do beyond decentralized finance. But the number one thing that stood out to me from his talk that I think we're going to see a lot of traction from is actually going to be decentralized social media or web three based social media. And so let's talk about why. Well, first, let's look at basically what blockchains are good at compared to, you know, alternative ways of doing things. And let's look at how we can actually improve social media with blockchain. So I'm actually going to borrow some ideas from Vitalik's talk here. Again, the link's down in the description below if you want to watch the entire thing. So full credit there. But he says that basically people use DeFi for two primary reasons in the first place. You know, number one, finance is the area where a lot of centralization, you really feel the pain of it. That's where it kind of sucks the most. For example, if you want to go wire funds at a bank, it takes like forever to do that. You actually have to go into the physical location. You have to wait for the wire to settle. But with blockchain, you can just send money basically instantly. And so DeFi really solves this pain point. There's lots of other things DeFi does well. And one of the reasons that DeFi works right now with Ethereum as it is, you know, warts and all being kind of slow and kind of expensive to use is people are still willing to use it because they're making money with it, right? They're willing to pay transaction fees on top of the Ethereum network because they're, you know, getting a high return on tokens that they're trading or farms that they're entering and leaving. They're making money with it. So they're willing to spend money to make money. And it's a natural fit because finance is a pay to play system. But right now, if you were to build, you know, a social network on top of Ethereum, it wouldn't necessarily work as well. You the, All these benefits wouldn't necessarily transfer over. But since Ethereum is actually making a lot of changes in the coming months to improve its transaction fee issue, then new use cases are emerging and the fact that it's making this transition can actually make it more viable to create a web three based social network. And that's because, you know, as layer two scaling solutions go online, transactions are going to become cheaper. And as Ethereum aggress from proof of work, proof of stake, and then sharding gets turned on as well, then we can also improve that scalability problem with those improvements. But once those technical barriers are crossed, you know, why would you use a decentralized social media or a blockchain based social media platform as opposed to a centralized one? Well, like Vitalik says in his talk, basically, there's a pretty wide widespread understanding that social media as we see it today ha kind of sucks or there's some major problems and then we need better ones. So what are some of these problems? Well, number one is censorship or manipulation. Basically, social media has the ability to hide things they don't like or promote things that they do like and also the ability to completely ban users from their platform. And I think more and more users are becoming aware of this and desiring in some sort of alternative. And the other reasons that he laid out are like low quality discourse. So how many times do you see like a really high value social media posts put out there and then it has all these like terrible comments. Maybe it's just like spam or 
scammers or just really low quality discourse. And then the last one is basically uh, engagement misaligned with quality. That's what he says in the video. Basically, the idea is that you, social media platforms incentivize people to click on things that aren't necessarily of the highest quality. They just get attention and therefore they get shown the most. All right, so let's talk about some of these benefits that he proposes in here and how blockchain can make this better with social media. So let's start with the idea of censorship. So let's talk about like outright censorship, like somebody saying, well, I'm not going to show your post or basically... You know, I just want to ban somebody from a platform altogether. Well, of course, with blockchain, anytime you put new information on the blockchain, it's there forever. So this has pros and cons for sure, but let's talk about these one by one. So number one, basically, if you were to write, you know, new social media posts or maybe your account or something like that to the blockchain in a way that did not have any center central control, then nobody could ever censor your posts and nobody could ever, you know, kill your account. Now, that's a big benefit of blockchain technology, but some people might say, well, hey, there's still a drawback to that because what if somebody, you know, put some information out there that they don't want the world to see, or maybe there's certain kinds of content that you don't want to personally see in your social media app. Even if it's written on blockchain, like it just got put there and there's still a benefit from somebody censoring it out so that you can't see it. Well, you can actually fix this problem by separating apps from protocols. So what do I mean by that? So if you were to separate your app out into two parts, you could create a decentralized social media media protocol, essentially, where you put all the information for the social media platform inside of like smart contracts on a blockchain. Not all data belongs in the blockchain, but the central part of the application, the real censorship resistant important part could exist on top of the blockchain itself with smart contracts. And then you could have an application that talks to this protocol. And then maybe this is where some censorship features could come into play. So essentially, anything that gets written to the protocol on the blockchain itself can't be censored. But maybe you have an application where you know, either you just let somebody curate what you can and can't see, you, you, you add some level of trust for them to do that. Or maybe you can have some sort of settings inside your application that control what you can and can't see. Okay. And how this could actually produce a better outcome is you could have competition between app developers that hook into these protocols. Okay. So you don't have to fully trust one app developer to read everything from the protocol and maybe censoring it, or maybe you don't like the censorship features of one versus the other. You could always switch app providers. Okay. And if there's enough dissatisfied users, you wouldn't lose the network effect of the social media application itself because it's there in the protocol. You're just getting to choose which application you read from the protocol with. So in short, this protocol could be neutral, but the app could be somewhat opinionated. And this same design principle could enhance other drawbacks of social media. So, you know, in addition to censorship, there are problems with the almighty algorithm, you know, like the YouTube algorithm, the Twitter algorithm, whatever it is. There are two big complaints by this. No, number one, they'll surface posts that get the most engagement but, you know, the most engagement isn't always the highest quality. That's one of the critiques that Vitalik makes in the video. And then number two with the algorithms is they could essentially surface ideas or topics that they personally favor and suppress ideas maybe that they don't like or even individual users. So let's say you're on a social media website like this, like Twitter, for example, then you as a user can kind of get censored. Maybe your posts get shadow banned and maybe they don't get shown to as many people for, you know, whatever reason. You could just be censored. You could be shadow banned. You know, conversely, um, you know, you might have something that's really engaging on social media but isn't a high quality but the algorithm is just surfacing it because it's getting engagement and similarly over here you can see the things that are trending well you know the social media outlet could just decide well we're going to make this topic trending because it provides some benefit to our application or our company and we're not going to show certain things that don't benefit the values that we have so you can solve a lot of those problems like i was talking about here with with where you have a protocol separate from applications and there can be competition among applications to read for the same protocol. Maybe at the app level, you know, you have different ways that algorithms are implemented, or maybe you have applications that don't actually use an algorithm. They show everything in a linear fashion, or that there's competition between the app makers to determine what, you know, shows up in an algorithm in the first place. It's just less and less risk of, you know, certain ideas or people being promoted or suppressed when you have this separation of concerns. And there are other things that you can add into social media to change how the incentives work and, you know, try to filter the quality of what actually gets created on the network itself. So one idea that Vitalik talks about in the video is actually using prediction markets to incentivize content that's there for the long term rather than short term. OK, so right. A lot of times in social media, you'll see, you know, content that gets a lot of engagement really fast, but doesn't necessarily have long term value. And then social media just kind of gets piled together and flooded with content that's only relevant for the moment and not the long term. But he actually talks about how you can introduce prediction markets into this equation 
to try to incentivize social media posts that do have this staying power rather than this really you know short flash in the pan relevance. And another way he talks about this is potentially integrating decentralized autonomous organizations or DAOs into social media, where you could curate who's you know posting in a certain community or in a circle based upon membership of that DAO, which in many cases would probably just be token ownership. And the last major thing that you could do with these social media platforms is actually introducing other economic incentives with cryptocurrency into these social media platforms. All right, so those are some ideas on how you know blockchain can actually improve social media and why this could be another big trend coming down the pike for this entire space, particularly for Ethereum. You know, these are some of the points that Vitalik laid out inside of his talk at ETH CC. Again, I'll put a link to that down in the comment section below or in the description so that you can watch that. I've drawn pretty liberally from that talk, so full credit where credit is due. But there's a lot of use cases for blockchain beyond decentralized finance or DeFi that we're using right now. And a lot of these use cases are being made possible because of the advancements in blockchain technology that are specific to this moment in time, specifically layer two scaling and the move to you know Ethereum 2.0. It's going to make all this stuff a lot faster, a lot cheaper, way more scalable for mass adoption, which is ultimately what social media needs in order for any you know blockchain based social media network to to do what it's supposed to. So that's all I got for today. As always, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. If you're as fascinated with this new technology as I am, you want to get your hands dirty, how can you get started today? Well, you can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find any of my free courses there. They're like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those and you want to take the next step, or hey, maybe you want to take a master shortcut entirely, I can show you to become a blockchain master step-by-step from start to finish over at dappyuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You don't have to be an expert to get started today. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real-world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. And until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University. <laughs>